Strength Hammer, episode 91, starting out strong yet again, two in a row. We're getting this formula down, uh, at least for now. Right. <laughs> Alex, how you doing? Great, man. Doing so, so well. Good. Excellent. That's good. That's good. Um, yeah. So uh, as we uh, go through it today, we're going to once again bring you the strength first. Uh, got right. a- a little bit of little bit of fitness news, fitness industry side of things, and then and Alex is gonna drop a lowdown on how to get your protein goals, which is very hard when you actually start realizing you're not you're not you feel like it's really hard to get to until you actually adjust for it. And Alex helped me for this a while back too, because it's like it's like what am I missing? And like just small tips, and it's like you can get there, you can still get there pretty quick, but yeah, it's it's Alex with the hot tips and tricks today. But first, some fitness news. Fitness news. All right, so uh, we got World Strongest Man coming up here, uh, start of May. Right. It's the next big event right. I'm I'm aware of. Alex, do you even know any other major events coming up for fitness side of things? No, I think that's the big one. Um, where where are the CrossFit Games? That's the only one I've been paying, paying attention to. Uh, we just the CrossFit Open just happened. The CrossFit Games, I think, is more in summer. Yeah. There's also there's summer. also a couple other CrossFit events. I'll I'll try and get them up and get I'll get a spreadsheet. I'll be smart about it. We can follow it. Yeah, see what's happening. Yeah, um, yeah but uh, World's Strongest Man. So there's been some updates uh, from people dropping out, coming in. So I think the, the biggest two people we're looking at right now is the Stoltman brothers and Mitch Hooper and Thor. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But we had like Martin Lises, uh, Mateus, Kielikowski, both uh, dropped out for one reason or the other, whether to heal or take a break. So it's a lot. It is a lot. It's unfortunate, but it... it... It, it's the reality of things. Yeah, it's it's um, we we're talking about like you know like we look at it, it's like oh well it's like that, that event's months apart and us as people who don't lift, you know, hundreds that, and hundreds and here. hundreds yeah, yeah. <laughs> like because you have to train like that so you know the toll on your body is extreme so they need longer break but um, well two of our favorites are out. I am excited. There's a he goes by a, a Camba dude on Instagram oh. Nicholas. Yeah, Nicholas Camby, he's from Italy. He's a super strong guy, and I've never seen him at this event. I've seen him, like, he does strong, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to see how he performs, because he's, he's just a cool dude. He has good content, too, on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Um, there's a... Huh, cool. yeah. yeah, and there's a Spencer Remick. I don't know who that is at all, <laughs> if I'm honest. Uh, has confirmed. Uh, and actually, Novikov withdrew, uh, the Ukrainian... Really? Uh, yeah. Mm, I wonder. I hope everything's okay because yeah, it, he did it, pretty well. He did. He did well. He didn't do as well as he normally would have done at the Arnold's, but he's also living in a country that's in war, so things are gonna right. be different. Who knows? Right. I wonder re- if that plays a role. <laughs> I mean, he can. It's I'm not like. Me. Yeah. Yes, maybe. I don't know, but could be part of it. Yeah. Um. But they never really go into much detail when these people drive to go check out their content, and Novikov never really talks about. <laughs> His stuff anyway like once again probably because yeah. he's in a country that's at war yeah. pretty aggressively at the moment unfortunate yeah and it's weird because it's not like not to get political in a weird way but like as an american like we're always at war but i i, I have no sense of that because it's right. always so far removed from where we live so right. it's you know who knows right. what 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 it's like living there right and it's a relatively small country right so yeah I'm sure it feels like it's very close Yes. Um, but yeah, so that will be fun to see uh, how the strongest band plays out. I said I'm gonna I'm a root for Camba dude, a little underdog, uh, and then Mitch yeah. Uber. Yeah, I'm probably gonna vote for. I mean, voting for Mitch seems like the easy way out. So maybe I'll pick another person. Sure. Oh, I, I. It's just it's hard. It's hard not to root for him because he his lift heavy so be cool. kind. Good messaging. He's so cool. I love his brand. Did you see his? Uh, did you see his uh, April first uh, rebranding? 
No, go, what was like, it? I missed it. Like, don't lift and F yourself or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty good. That's pretty I mean, good. It was, it was not bad, but it was something along those lines. It's like, we decided to rebrand. The sales are not doing very hard, so. Uh, that's good. That's pretty good. good. <laughs> okay, but yeah, there's some uh, some fitness news out there for everybody. Uh, so, with that, Alex, what about uh, what about protein? I'm coming to you. Protein. How much protein do you even need? How much protein do you need? Uh, it depends on your goals. Since we're talking about building muscle and getting stronger, I'm guessing our goals are not just survival. Our goals are actually building mass and performing mm -hmm. better. So typically, the most recent guidelines are 0.7 to 1 gram per pound of desired body weight. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, so if you don't, that, that's really you key, the, the desired body weight. Right. Because I think right. a lot of people just hear like that that first number and like, oh, that's what I need. And it's just like, no, it's where you want to be, whether you're going up or down, right. eat towards that right. goal. Right. So if you are 240 pounds, it has to be realistic, right? If you are 240 yeah. pounds and you usually feel good at 200 pounds, then aim for 200 pounds, right? And then you do 0.7 to 1 gram per 200 pounds of body weight, which ends up being 140 to 200 grams of protein for the day. Mm -hmm. Right. Simple as that. Um, that's the, if you're not doing that, if you're not at least tracking or have an idea of where your protein is, that would be the first thing I would do. And then from then on, there's a lot of other things you could dial in with protein. Nice. Yeah, no, that's very good. And there is apps out there to track it. Uh, I still use my mm -hmm. fitness pal. Um, I think it was the RP strength. That's a, that's one you can pay for, but there's also a lot more to that one too, that can be beneficial fitting. It depends on what level you want to be. Like, do you want more than just a tracker? Yes. So. It really depends. Yeah, my fitness pal is good. Uh, chronometer is another good one I recommend. Um, another one that's good is Jeff Nippert's tracking app. Oh, nice. I don't remember the name of it. Uh, Macro Factor. I've heard some of my clients use that. They like it. I've never used it myself, but that's another good one from Jeff Nippert, who's great programming. Um, but yeah, I would say I would say the protein, the total amount of protein, if you're not getting that, that should be the first thing you do, right? Okay. A couple other things to consider would be the timing of your protein, right? It's just the reality that if you intake all of your protein in one sitting, you're not going to utilize all of it for building muscle, right? Like you're going to absorb all of it technically, like the calories, right? But your your muscle for recovery can only utilize so much at a time. Yeah, they won't, how much you they won't synthesize it to its fullest extent. Exactly, exactly. So realistically, you want to split your protein intake mm -hmm. at least in three meals, ideally a bit more than that. Yeah, and and there is you're, you'll hear a lot about it. Um, if you're just like kind of starting out on this journey too, cause people, some people will say, "Oh, well, you know, you should take the protein within so much after working out and this oh, and that sure, and that." Sure, yeah, sure, and sure. It, when you're trying to get like high levels and you've been at it for a while, yeah, that will probably start the matter a little bit more. But at first, yeah. you're probably just not having enough. So get it in through the course of the day is the main goal. At least, yeah. Alex, don't do it all at once. Do it. I mean, don't do it all at once. Don't have, don't, tr <laughs> don't do a hundred eggs in the morning and then just do carbs right. the rest of the day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would say like the, the protein priority, uh, like protein checklist priority order would be for me. Are you getting enough? That's the first thing, mm -hmm. right? Are you getting enough total? The next thing would be the timing. The next thing probably would be the quality of protein. Right. Right. So like generally most animal proteins have higher bioavailability. Right. Generally, not everything like soy. Um, and there's a couple other proteins that are vegan that have pretty high bioavailability. Just in general, if you want to be safe, if you want to, if you don't want to look up PDCAA scores of every protein source, yeah. just generally animal protein uh, has higher bioavailability, which means you absorb more of it than uh, most vegan proteins. Right. Vegan proteins are not bad. So don't hear me saying vegans like, you can, <laughs> you can get, I have friends and clients who are vegans who definitely get to their protein goals. Yep. It's just, you have to be a bit smarter with it. Right, but I think also if you're if you've chosen like the vegan lifestyle, you're probably already used to that level of research of what you're putting exactly. in your body. So it's yeah. But generally speaking, just just if if you're not if you're not a vegan person, just eat animals. They're great. They're tasty. <laughs> and, and if you're worried about ethics, you know, just make sure it's ethically sourced. Make yes, sure it's yeah. local. Make sure you know the people. Right. You can definitely do it in a way that's not super harmful. Right. If you're worried about that. Right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely shop local all the time for for your meat like it, as much as you can there's a new butcher where i live now and it's been wonderful just buying it there fresh like it's yeah. never like literally never frozen <laughs> literally never frozen <laughs> i love that i love yeah. that 
Um, yeah. Perfect. Okay, so Alex, let's let's uh, let's I, let's say here here I am. I'm I'm a 210 pound man. I want to get okay. to, I want to get to 220 in the Good course point, of yeah. co- course of like eight months, nine months, whatever you want to call it. Oh, sure, sure. Um, so all right, I'm eating my I'm eating my food, and it turns out I have uh, I have an egg every day, an English muffin, some sausage. Um, you know, like, okay, like, and that's filling for me. A couple cups of coffee. Maybe I'll have like half an avocado. All right. Clearly I'm not hitting my protein goals already. I, I'm assuming you imagine. So for breakfast, you know, eggs are, eggs are good. Egg white additives are fine. Um, I don't know how much protein is actually in a sausage patty. Probably not a ton. <laughs> but, not a ton. Less than you would think. Right, but what's an easy way for me to supplement that meal? I'll be like, okay, well, maybe let's let's drop the avocado since it's just fat, and delicious. Um, sure. What's a good what's a good substitute I can to help get that protein goal other other than just adding a second egg to start? Sure. Yeah. Very good question. So, and I'm guessing you're eating three meals a day, right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. So three meals a day, probably one snack. So that that means we're splitting our protein intake of an average. We're looking between 155 to 220 grams of protein. Let's do an average of that and shoot for like 185, right? Yep. We have four food intakes, right? So we divide that by four. That's an average of 46 grams of protein per meal, right? Now, probably realistically, your snack is going to be a little less. So your snack might be closer to 35. So your meals, we're really looking at 50, 55 grams of protein. Right. Unless okay. unless for some reason your snack becomes just a protein shake. If it, Yeah. If that's the case, then it's fine, yeah. right? But realistically, right. even if it, simply, you have to consider how many intakes of food are you going to have, mm-hmm. right? And what's your total protein goal? Gotcha. Total protein goal is 185. So let's say for average, we're looking for about 45 grams of protein per meal. 46.25, let's say 45, 45 right? Yeah. So for that, lunch and dinner, really simple, right? Are you getting some kind of animal muscle, chicken, beef, pork, fish, seafood? That's taken care of, mm-hmm. right? Protein shake for a snack, also taken care of, right? You can literally do two scoops of protein powder and you're done. Yeah. Right? That's simple. A lot of people, and I'm glad you started with that. A lot of people struggle with breakfast. I and mean, that's because that's where my heck, issue was actually. That's, yeah, yeah. yeah. This is, how this the heck do you get 46 grams of protein for breakfast? Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, a very simple, practical way is something like uh, literally introducing protein powder. Like if you're struggling, introducing protein powder. Right. Greek yogurt with protein powder, mm-hmm. or uh, do a shake in the morning. You could use protein powder for things like um, like protein French toast, high protein pancakes. Right. Right. That's a simple way to do it. There are also more complex ways to do it where you get uh, a bunch of high protein sources for breakfast, right? right? So you could do a thing in Greek yogurt, which is going to be like 15 to 20 grams of protein. You could do two eggs. That's going to be 12 grams of protein. You could do a couple slices of turkey bacon. That's going to be another 10 grams of protein, right? So you do 20, 12, and 10. You're right about 40 something, yeah. right? Maybe have a slice of toast, another two grams. That's where tracking helps a lot, right? Because you can really add up and get enough. Right, and, and let's be honest too, like, at least whenever you get into like a fitness journey, like Alex, you're probably very much the same way. And, and I think humans in general are this way, but especially when you're, you're dialing it in, you tend to just start eating the same thing. Like my breakfast is almost always the same. It takes yes. a lot for me to not do my normal breakfast. Lunch is almost always the same thing. Dinner is the yes. same four or five things. Yes. Um, Absolutely. So it's not hard. Like I said, so that way, like you don't have to track it all the time too. Once you kind of go, this is where I'm at. Yes. Good, and then until you need to change that protein goal, yeah, yeah, that's where it that's that's where it gets a little bit okay. Okay, track again, see what's up. Yes, um, I absolutely agree. Yeah, and I would I, say, sorry, uh, I would say tracking is a very help. Everybody should track. I think at some point, right? Yeah, because that's the best, quickest way to learn about food, right? Mm-hmm. Set your goals, set your calorie goals, protein goals. If you want to track fats and carbs, whatever, but the most important are going to be calories and protein. And learn what foods help you get to those goals, right? And if you eat the similar thing most of the time, like you said, I completely agree with you. You will find foods that help you get to your goals. Then you don't have to necessarily track as long as your diet is pretty similar. Right. So, yeah, 100% agree with you. Yeah, and then probably maybe next time or in the near future, we'll do the topic. We'll talk about fats and carbs and how people respond differently to them. Because sure. that, that was that's always a fun chat whenever we've had that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do have to say, um, my go-to whenever I was adjusting my breakfast was to add in that one scoop of protein powder and then just plain Greek yogurt. Like 
you're mixing it up and it, it just looks like it's just protein sludge like it it sounds awful but it's actually really delicious cause it tastes like whatever the protein powder is and i feel like a space marine when i'm eating it because it's just like it's just fuel it's just, like it's tasty yeah. yeah and to your point like if you if you if you hear it and you're like oh it sounds disgusting add some berries to it add yes. some granola to it add a handful of nuts like it doesn't have to be just slush me and you it works, right? Yeah. <laughs> but somebody who wants to make maybe a fancier breakfast, something on there, you can make it tastier than just that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it, yeah. to be fair, if it's not tasty, then your protein powder probably isn't tasty. That's, <laughs> yeah. Get 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 a protein powder that you're going to like, right? So yes. Maybe if, maybe if you have some finances done, get the ones that's $10 cheaper, get the one that's $10 expen more expensive, but then it's not good, just going to sit in your cupboard for next three years. Right, yeah. It's, especially to like... Uh, because like some people say like oh like if you get like a small cup of protein yogurt and you're just doing that to see like an extra 10 grams that's fine but if you want to like really bulk it up protein powder is the way to go because if you buy flavored greek yogurt it's always too sweet every single time <laughs> yeah it depends it depends yeah I, yeah i think it depends on who you go to i think yeah. for you it's too sweet for me it's, i think i like it but to your point protein powder it, if especially if you get it in big containers like you find the flavor you like it is such an efficient way to get to your protein goal. Yes. It's so efficient and it's so inexpensive. Right. And right. that said, one other thing we should probably mention is, especially down the line as you get more into this, eating your protein is better than just drinking it. Generally. For, For sustainability purposes. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Because um, yes, yes. like there was times where I was getting so much protein, I wasn't doing protein shakes. But as yep. soon as I realized I wasn't getting that, get the protein shakes back in because like it's very efficient and quick. Right. And it's tasty right. too. It, so. it, it comes down to you don't need protein powder to get to your protein goal. You absolutely do not. Right. Yeah. However, it is helpful to get to your protein goal. 100%. Yeah. Simple as that. Perfect. Well, Alex, uh, a nice little info dump on protein to help people out there. Uh, and once again, as uh, uses your first time seeing this one, Alex uh, does do uh, Webby coaching. Mm -hmm. Okay, I wasn't yeah, sure if nutrition health, health coaching, yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure if like nutrition had a different name than coaching. I don't know why my brain asked. It's it's because it's. Uh, I mean, counseling, nutrition counseling. Maybe. Yeah. But uh, Alex, you can reach out to Alex, uh, have him coach you, uh, counsel you, and he can help you get to your goals like he helped me. Uh, and you get to talk to him more often. That's uh, why wouldn't you want to talk to this handsome man in front of <laughs> us right here? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Well, Alex, uh, as usual though with this uh, regular content update. What are you working on hobby-wise? Oh, yeah. So I definitely, I'm recognizing I will need to ramp up my hobby if we're going to do this every week because I have I have not done anything since last week. That's fair. Well, that's not true. I did, we, technically since last week, we did have our campaign event, yeah. right? And that is hobby. So I played a game. I lost a game to Idenep. And... Uh, Basically, I invaded a territory and I lost that game, so he defended it well. And then we made our campaign moves and we have uh, our games planned for the next month. Yes. That was really my only hobby. Uh, I'm just I'm just getting into a, a point where like, I am finally getting some time to hobby. I think this week and maybe even tonight. Again, just to hobby. And as most hobbyists, I have like 10 projects going on at the same time. So I'm just going to pick one and commit to it. And right now I'm going to go ahead and start working on my Moria Warband. Nice. nice little old school troll. Very nice. And uh, I'm going to start working on the little small, small 250 point Moria Warband that I have. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, I'll talk about my hobby with Neil over in the uh, jump to the, uh, the next segment of this podcast. But I will leave a little note here. I realized that after the fact last week that I just had like a hard cut from you to him. <laughs> so I'm going to try, and hopefully you will see this this week, I'm going to try and get like a little, small little music interlude to switch it up a little bit. Just, just yeah, transition yeah. a little bit better. Because I, I put it, because we were recording all like in weird times because to get it in, and I just threw it all together. I was like, I'm done. <laughs> but I'm going to try to do a little bit to soften that blow a little bit. At the very least, it will fade out, and then right. fade back in. Right. You should see if you can morph my face into his. So just like, more and more disappointing as you go like from my face into his. <laughs> no, no, no. I you, love you. Yeah, that's like you. You got the hair. He doesn't. So it'd just be like just, <laughs> you're just aging. Just ask him to wear a hat. See, nobody knows. 
Exactly. That's true. That's true. We'll get, we'll get him an Adidas hat, but... All right, Alex, <laughs> we, will, we will bid you adieu until next week. So, thank right. you. And hey, guys. I will see strong. you guys on the other side. Okay, and we are back with the one, the only, the greatest person I have in my life to talk Warhammer with. That's right, Big M. <laughs> Sit down. You are second behind the mighty Neil. Oof. Wow, high praise, high praise. Well, this this I this spicy say. spicy water, this this Topo Chico tangerine with ginger extract got is got some. Uh, what would they call that? Uh, that carbonated water, Lacroix, Lacroix Pamplemousse. I call it Lacroix. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I've watched Warhammer Weekly today, and look, they they pronounced it properly, and I'm just like, well, I'm from Western Pennsylvania. I don't do that. I was born the in court? Dubois. I was born born in Dubois, and guess what's over by Pet Pittsburgh? Um, uh, oh, I forgot the name of it. Uh, North for sales, not not North for sigh. North for sales. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. We we take yeah, French. I used, to, I used to live down in Virginia, and you know my northern accent. We came down and we called Suffolk and Norfolk. As as it should probably be pronounced, but it is in fact Suffolk okay. and Norfolk. <laughs> if you're that. down there, yes, oh wow, yes. that is how it's pronounced, baby. So. Actually, it's really funny. Or like Western Pennsylvania, we had a lot of uh, a lot of historical sites from the French and Indian War. I'm not sure. I'm sure it's in Ohio too. It's like around this area. But if there's a city or a town named after like with a French name, we mispronounce it. But if we're talking about those historical forts and stuff. You better believe we are saying it exactly, <laughs> and I don't know why. That like, I bet I bet they're like you know it. I was born in Dubois, Pennsylvania. Sure, it should be mm -hmm. Dubois. Um, I'm sure there's a Fort Dubois near Dubois, and I'm sure they pronounce uh -huh. them differently. <laughs> I, I, I can believe it. Uh, I hundred percent see that. Yeah, that's too funny. But Neil, episode ninety two. We're closing in on that mighty one hundred. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it's meaningless. Everything's meaningless. We're all going to die one day, so have a good life. But we'll get to 100. <laughs> cross that threshold. We'll cross. The mighty, the, mighty, the, the, the glass ceiling for podcasts. I don't know. Is it? <clears throat> I don't know. You know, I always wonder when I see podcasts, like, they're like in the thousands. I'm like, are you really? Or did you just start at, like, 700? Yeah. Because, like, we do this <laughs> weekly, and it's not going quick. It's not going slow. I will say I was on YouTube the other day and I was just kind of rolling through our channel because I wanted to see like, you know, how far back you and I were doing this uh, weekly thing. Yeah. And I tell you what, it goes back quite a few episodes. How, how far? Because so, like we had some false starts, but once we got this rolling of just me and you, like we got it good. We're, it we're, goes we're... back real far. I, I couldn't put a number on it, but it's it's like real far, like past, like, like we're, we're well, well beyond 60 of these. Yeah. Oh, wow. So we're yeah over a we're year. Cruising. Okay. Yeah, we're cruising. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll get to 100. All right, 400, mm -hmm. here we come. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll be brains in jars, and we'll, we'll keep going. Because mm -hmm. we'll have opinions on Warhammer. But mm -hmm. first, before we do opinions on Warhammer, uh, let's talk some hobby time. Neil, I know you've been busy with uh, life and such, but have you gotten any, any hobby in, any hobby thoughts, any hobby project yeah. plans, if not even printing? Oh, I have. So I've... Uh... So Last Sword Miniatures has a, um, it's like a Queen Maiden on Great Eagle nice. that I'm going to be kit bashing. Um, I have a narrative hero that I've had since I was like 11. And his name is uh, Calendrail, and he is a high elf. And what, what I made this guy out of, I had the old metal eagle with the straight wings. Oh, the really um, tiny one? No, this, this, it wasn't, it was this, this metal Eagle goes back to like, it was like the third edition Marauder Eagle. Okay. So this goes way back. It goes before like those really terrible metal ones. Those like, was, that didn't look like Eagles at all. Was this like <laughs> a thing where you got it and you're, you're looking at it like this is older than me. Yeah, like, like it, looked, old, old. It, it was, it was for the time it was, it was out there, you know? Um, but, uh, for some reason they made new sculpts that were worse. <laughs> It didn't look like eagles. Oh, okay. You've seen them. You've seen I have I know a few of those ones. That's yeah, what I'm I sure thought, thought you met. Yeah. Yeah. No, they, this, this one is before that and actually looks like an eagle. Um, so um, I always wanted to, uh, you know, a guy like, you know, you can put a high elf on an eagle, but the problem is there is no model for that. That doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Back then, way back when, if you go look, look up high elf uh, on eagle marauder miniatures, you can find a guy with a bow and arrow sitting on top of that eagle that i had um but um 
since they didn't have a, a model, I took the guy from like Heroes Quest, the elf from Heroes Quest. I sawed off the base, which was like a permanent oh, base. Oh, yeah, yeah. There. That's square. And then I put the guy on top. <laughs> and I even cut the guy's arm off. I put a, a, a Silver Helm's lance on his arm. <laughs> I put a shield on the other arm, you know, whatever. I was kit bashing when I was 11, apparently. But, um, but yeah, so I always wanted to have a, a guy on a great eagle, and that was going to be my guy. You know, I, he was always a hero. He was never a lord level character because you know I, he was trying to make his way up there. You right, know? right. Um, so anyway, long story short, um, they have an amazing model that is actually an eagle with the legs built in on it that, that actually looks like somebody's supposed to be on the eagle, like riding you know? it, not just surfing. It's not it. like some guy like standing on the eagle, you know, or something, you know, like. <laughs> Yeah, uh, he looks like he's actually riding it, like he's mounted. Nice. Um, so okay. we're gonna kit bash the uh, the chest piece. We're gonna kit bash uh, the head and everything, and we'll we'll do some different stuff with the arms and everything. So Last Word Miniatures has some cool stuff for that. If you are of the printing disposition, um, the other thing I did when I printed it is I increased it ten percent in size. So it's a big ass eagle. There you go. Um, it's a great eagle. It's a great eagle. It's the biggest great eagle. It's the greatest and as it should be for. Uh, um, for my character so um anyway so i did that that was cool we're still working on putting him together and then um outside of that uh let's see here we got you know the makings of a little little chariot here Ooh, someone going got, someone going nomad we got some piggies there you go you know woo pig suey and uh, we're gonna have some uh some <laughs> I, I don't know, savage orcs. I guess we'll just call them orcs with frenzy. <laughs> <laughs> savage orcs do not uh, apparently exist anymore. Uh, but um, no, anyway, they're so, gone forever. Uh, kinda, that is going to be going into my more narrative um, orcs and goblins list. Okay. Which I'm desperate to play. I just don't. I'm waiting on that uh, made to order orc shaman on Wyvern to yeah. complete that army. They said it was soon, yeah. and I saw. Um like the pre-orders that are coming up this Saturday, but I didn't see him there. I might go mm -hmm. back and reread it. Cause maybe it's in the text. Now that I'm thinking about it just to be okay. six. I know you're after, we need to make sure you get that. So yeah. Yeah. I, I don't want to miss it. And I'm never on the site enough to know when that kind of stuff shows up and goes away. And so I'm desperate not to miss it. Listen, I have that in my brain. As soon as I see it, I will just buy it and then you get it later. Cause like, I know fair you enough. want it. Yeah, yeah, fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so, uh, yeah, so working on getting all the models together for that army. And then I played a game with Mr. John DeCoulos, a good friend of mine. Nice, nice. We played a, a game of Old World, and it was Orcs and Goblins versus Beastmen again. Um, I took what um, my list I have together that had some modifications from uh, our open weekend with okay. the Barn Owl. Nice, nice. And uh, I tried to make it, you know, a little bit, I tightened it up a little bit. You know, and this is my more competitive list, right? You know, if in fact I can possibly run a competitive list. Um, so what we're looking at in that list is uh, two units of night goblins, around thirteen to fifteen of them um, in each unit, and we got three fanatics in each unit. As you do, um, as you do. Yeah, so eighteen black orc, it, black orcs with great weapons in one, um, with a orc. Is he a war boss or a big boss? He is a I can't remember. He's he's a he's a big boss. He's big not boss. the not the full war boss. Gotcha. Um and who else we we had level four wait, wait, wait. uh night goblin shaman. How many how many Ed Budding hats are in this list? Uh there are there was one on him. Okay. And one on the guy. Um no, he didn't have one. Um just one on my wyvern. Just one. Hmm. A hat. Not more than okay, one. Darn. I was hoping for twelve. <laughs> <laughs> so i didn't have to model um, <laughs> uh, which is great but anyway um it was a fun game um he, the he had a bone grinder giant so i got to play Ooh. against a bone grinder giant for the first time that was uh brought in with the mercenaries he also had um not the cygor what's the other one uh that mm. so, yeah i know i'd it's that duh. The guy with the four arms. Yeah, I just, like I just, arms. I just fought that recently, and I can't. I'm drawing a blank on it. Yeah. Anyway, that thing's tough to seven. <laughs> yeah. It's, so, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, so, so is the bone grinder giant. So that's oh, okay. All right. Seven showing up. Uh, you know, uh, one of my favorite moments of that game was uh, a little goblin boss who had uh, 
a wallop was one hit wonder. <laughs> Smacked him for one moon. You know? I got him. <laughs> he just he leaves. In. He walks away. And My job he, is done. Oh, yeah. Then he promptly just like walloped the whole unit. But <laughs> um, not before a unit of three uh, fanatics went into a unit of four minotaurs that were all tooled up. And took the, they all buzzed right through the minotaurs and took the entire unit off. Oh my goodness! To the wound, Oof. boom! Ouch. Oh, that hurts! That hurts my soul to hear that. Um, <laughs> sure, does. sure does. You know, actually, um, something we missed in our orc and goblin review with that uh, bone grinder giant. Mm. I see it, you've seen it now. You saw how big the base it's on now, haven't you? Mm. He must have had it on the old base, so because it didn't look too big. He just. That base He's kind of proxying an old giant as the bone grinder. That base is a 50 by 100 millimeter. Oh, yeah. He definitely didn't have it on that. Yeah, well, well, you know what? 50 by 100? You know what you could fit on a 50 by 100? Can you fit like the full Mega Gargan? You could fit a Mega Gargan on it, technically, because the way their oh, legs are, wow. they're, they're alternating. Yeah. You can actually fit it on that base. And I'm like, I, I heard it on a, a square base mentioned, and they're just like, yeah, it's probably big enough. And I looked, and it's like, yeah, it's big enough. You could, you could get it on there. It might not be the most comfortable fit, but it would. Those those mega gargants are a lot better looking than those bone grinders. Oh yeah, and cheaper. For sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I might have to think about that actually. Hmm. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think now that I think about it, fifty by hundred, he probably had that on there. He might have. Um, okay, yeah. Because that's more just like a chariot base, right? Fifty by hundred. Uh. Yeah, chariot. Yeah, fifty old chariots fifty by hundred. Like yeah. I said, you you can fit you can fit the mega gargan on there. Like I said, it's like I said, I, I, it'd be I, tight. It's tight, but you I'm can sure do it'd it. be tight though. Yeah. <laughs> if you if you sneeze too <laughs> too violently, the thing probably fall over and smash your model. But, <laughs> that is big. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Um, but anyway, yeah, really good game. Um, we we smashed armies together. I had some uh, night goblin squig hoppers just doing doing work on some impact hits, rolling real high for their uh, 3D6 uh, random movement. So at one point, uh, out of a possible 18 inches, I got him to go 17 inches. You know, I mean, it was... <laughs> That's awesome. We had some pretty good rolls. And we played the uh, scenario where you're diagonal across from each other and you have to roll a dice for each unit. And on a one, they have to go into reserves. So he has a level four caster. I, I don't roll a one for one thing except for... My level four caster. Oh, the only caster. That's so... so he's got all these magic missiles and he is just just blasting the <laughs> shit out of him. That sucks. <laughs> For like two goddamn turns before I can bring this other guy in to try and stop, you know, dispel something. Yep. You know? Um so that hurt. Um but the game wound up finishing. Um I wanna say I think I won by something like two hundred and fifty points. Wow. So it was real close, very close to a draw. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was a really fun game. So I don't, I don't know if John was having as much fun as <laughs> I, but you know, when you, when you have three uh, fanatics take out your minotaurs, you know, things, things start to feel a little bit worse, but yeah, they gotta uh, it was a close game regardless. Holding that saltiness for sure. A little bit. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> That's good. I, I will enjoy the fanatics while I can. Cause I don't imagine that those things will stay the same into a, any new edition. <laughs> They I mean, are, they didn't get uh, FAQ'd, so you're fine. Fair enough. They're they're here so to stay. That's, uh, but I think that was my hobby, pretty much. You know, outside of you know printing, I really haven't got any paint on models outside of primer. That's, so that's I've been fine. dragging my feet on that. I had no reason to not be doing it tonight or today, and uh, just didn't happen. So that's fine. You sometimes need those days. Uh, I did it. Um, I think it was Sunday. Yeah, I think it was Sunday. Maybe it was Monday. I forget. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I was one of those moods too. Like I didn't feel like actually hobbying, but I wanted to be around hobby. So I just mm. made a couple rum and cokes and I just sat down here in my hobby space and just stared yeah. at my models. And I'm like, that's what I wanted to do tonight. Yeah. And sometimes you need that. You just like, just exist around it, but I don't want to actually yeah. do it. <laughs> that's been me with uh, printing, you know, like I go up and sometimes I'll just kind of put stuff into uh Chetu box, which is the, uh, the software that I use for, and I'll just like, you know, Oh, I'm gonna want this eventually, and so I build it up. I add the supports, whatever, and I save it as a project, and just and I sit there, you know. Even if I don't have the resin for it, you know, hey, if I ever do, maybe I'll, you know, one day have this thing. So it's all done. It's waiting for me to hit play. There you go. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, let's see. My hobby. Um, I'll start with the games played because they're 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 not super exciting. Uh, I did get a practice game in with my friend uh, Ben. Uh, for Old World. 
he wanted to get his first game in. He is a Beastman player from Sigmar. He started a Seraphon army uh, Christmas time, which is a good thing, because like, he now sees that his army is going back to Old World. Now, granted, Ben's a good guy. His response was, okay, I have a year to play with this. Let me also mm. learn Old World. Uh, he's going to play through the rest of the year with the Beastman to get the most... He, he loves the army. The most bang for the buck in Sigmar. And then at that point, he'll consider maybe rebasing or getting... Like, he's he's going to buy the round converter trays to start. Mm -hmm. But he might rebase it once it's fully out of Sigmar. Um, if he likes um, Old World. Now, we've had one game as the first game is 1,000 points. It was a... Let me give you a teaching rundown game. So count that mm -hmm. for what it's worth. Uh, yeah. But, you know, we played through five turns, just a normal pitch battle. He's like, I got the feel of it. He liked it. He was enjoying it. Because um, we did that right before we kicked off the campaign day for Sigmar, which I know you, we talked last time, yours is kind of wrapped up. Um, mm -hmm. Ours, we are going to fight through to the end of the the six-month cycle, or right, and then once fourth releases, it'll end. Uh, and we'll figure out something new to do with that map. Um, I have something generic planned, potentially, for Barn folks. Mm -hmm where it's any game system, and it's like we're all more just fighting for territories. Yeah. But you can play That's whatever you want. That's actually what I'm thinking about doing with ours, too, where it becomes more of like a, uh, just like a challenge scenario. Yeah. Like, it... I'll challenge you for, for a piece of terrain, right? And that, and that becomes a good way to, like, manage, like, kind of see who's who's getting all the wins, right? You can kind of see right. it on the map, yeah, you know? Like, end of the yeah. year, you'd be like, oh, dang. Like, right. <laughs> Bobby, you crushed face with, or you're either playing a bunch of games, and we're not, whatever, but um, yeah, yeah, something simple. I don't want it to be too in depth. Not, not like the plums. It's just just straight games. Like, hey, you beat this person, move a flag into the territory. So the thing will be, you have to. We'll have enough territory so everybody's touching everybody somewhere, in the mm -hmm. center, or something like yeah. that. We'll figure it out. But yeah, I, I've kind of changed it to where like you just just choose to fight somebody somewhere, or when you're picking territories, just pick your territories all across the map. They don't have to be touching. You know, whatever. Oh, that's a good and idea. So, I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. And the second one was actually uh, this couple, uh, last night. Um, did a campaign game. Um, it was fine. I don't want to talk about it. Uh, someone had a miserable time and took the whole 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 thing down a little bit. And it's one of the worst games of Warhammer I ever had to fight through <laughs> because of it. <laughs> Everybody else's table is fine except for one person. I'm not going to call them out because I love them dearly. Um, but it was not it was not fun. Uh, but I hope they're better. Uh, yeah. Because I'm. <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna have those. Yeah, you're unfortunately, you're gonna have those. Yeah, life, life, life happens. We're all, we're all there. Um, but uh, that's why we're gonna. That's why we did that stuff first. Um, but also, I actually got to paint a few things. So let me bring this up here with the slides from the boom. So on screen right now, you're gonna see a uh, not Warhammer model. You're gonna see mm. a Street Fighter character <laughs> statue. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah, this is really cool. I really, I really enjoyed that one. I, it was fun. Um, Cammy is my main for Street Fighter. Um, so I was like, you know, what? I didn't have like a, all the all the statuettes you can buy of her are really high quality and really expensive, <laughs> like mm -hmm. several hundred dollars. And I'm like, and they're big. I'm like, but I don't need that. But I was like, you know, this gave me excuse. Uh, I went on, bought like a four dollar STL. My friend printed mm -hmm. it out for me. Um primed it and you know the thing about painting it and it's like yeah let me just dive in and paint it so i got to uh do two things with it one paint a style that i'm not used to painting which is a bust statue type model because army painting is very different from painting miniature busts or these types of statues the way light effects and everything so rehashing how to shade and do all that sort of stuff with this was fun uh, i could have made things more extreme but this wasn't a competition piece it was a fun piece so i was just kind of flexing those hobby skill muscles without like pushing them to the limits mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing i got to do was mix almost every color on here like that's awesome yeah yeah the only color that i did not have to mix was actually her jacket it's like thousand sun blue is a one-to-one -one of her jacket in the game like from the nice. all the pictures i could find i was like okay so but you know that helped me be super neat because while i'm doing that white trim on her pants uh that gray blue green on the, her other pants well i mixed that and did that first so i didn't i didn't know how to remix it <laughs> so i was like be super yeah. super neat super neat um, <laughs> i'd have never made that happen with white no way i'd have messed <laughs> up somewhere um it was fun it was also I, i'm actually really proud you can see on her face uh i did like she has like one scar 
and I was able to do that. It looks natural. I'm like, that, that made me really happy. Just like the knock to be able to do eyes and a scar and like just real happy with that. Um, two things I'm not as happy with, but I'm not unhappy with. Um, cause I just knocked these out real quick. Cause I just, they were just sitting there. Um, the special mm. Stormcast character, uh, Lord Archon, Knight Archonum, Lord Archonum that you got, um, just paint it up real quick to match my current Stormcast. Threw him in the box of Stormcast. He'll probably never see the light of day again. Mm. <laughs> That's my Stormcast mm. too. <laughs> um, and then uh, this other one, it's a it's a Imari. It's a, essentially a space dwarf um, from the uh, mini wargaming game Ravage Star. Uh, mm. When I, me and Alex went up there for Squarebase GT, we're hanging out with and then getting to meet and talk with uh, Dave from Mini Wargaming. Uh, I mean, it, I, we got to see the whole line of this, by the way, like of all the rapid star stuff and it is really good sculpts and they're really cool and unique and i can easily see how they could fit into not just warhammer but a lot of different war games um mm -hmm. when we were there dave kindly gifted like he had a bunch of prints in a box just like extra prints or whatever and he's just like oh and just take one he's like and it's like oh like this door guy's cool he's like cool paint it up so <laughs> so i painted nice. up i didn't i didn't really push push it but like i said i just want to paint it up have fun it's a little little ornament piece here um, so shout out, I'll put, you know, I'll put a link to Rabbit Star because like those models are pretty cool and, and Dave's a good guy that I can, you know, count as a friend. So go support him mm -hmm. too. So, yeah. And then let me close. That's that. That's all the hobby. Um, my next hobby. So I do have a GW project, uh, that I'm working on right now, but I have some time to do that. So it's not a big problem. It's just building. It's not, it's nothing that I can't really like it's just ko and seraphon stuff but it's not for mm -hmm. it's for it's for the u.s open stuff it's not any secret stuff it's nothing you can't go buy on a shelf right now mm -hmm. so it's 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 boring <laughs> i mm -hmm. have to build and prime it so you won't see pictures of it because it's like who cares <laughs> um yeah yeah oh but i'm thinking i'm i'm still unsure neil maybe maybe we can talk about this because this podcast is mostly about chatting today and then some some news but i'm thinking about my next little project I will do for myself is the black talents. There you go. Um, I, I keep waffling back and forth because like, I'm not going to paint them to match my current stormcast. I'm going to paint them like they are in the box to the best of my ability. They, they are all hammers of Sigmar. Yes. 100%. They're, they are that character. Uh, Cause mm -hmm. I love the show. The animation is solid. It's worth it. More hammer plus. Um, mm -hmm. But I keep like going like the only, I guess I'll paint it to go with my daughters of Cain because I have a bunch of other of the universal allies just with daughters of Cain. Mm -hmm. But it's just like, I'm afraid I'm going to do that. And then they're going to be like, no more allies in this ed new edition. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I, I, I don't think so. But also it's like, it's also a cool piece to just like, maybe it's, I, and the reason I'm waffling is like, one, I want to paint it up. It's a toy. I want to paint it up. Two, though, it would look cool just as a display piece sitting there because it's a really cool box and all that. Yeah, I, I'm unsure. Like right now, I'm leaning sixty-five percent to paint it up, but there's part of me is just like, ah, no, maybe just save it as a collector's piece. Mm -hmm. Well, I personally, if you're looking for my opinion, I'd go with the, uh, I go with the, I'd, I'd make them gold. I'd do the uh, the golden boys since they're, you know, since they're named, since they're kind of in that, yep. they kind of have all that lore behind them, and even if they don't match, so what? I'll make the the basic will match my army. Yeah, but. Yeah. Okay, but you're you're on this, match. but as far as like the paint schemes and all that, yeah, you know they're they're obviously not daughters of Cain, right? So no. yeah. they would be an, a regiment of renown with it. So you're you're leaning on the side of just paint them up. It's not a it's a toy. It's not a collector's piece. That's what I would do, and you can okay. still make it a collector's piece. You know, but I, I mean, yeah, I'm not getting rid of it, but yeah, yeah, I would I would just I would, I would probably stick to close to the box art on those guys. Okay, but that's just me. So all right, I think you'll help you help push me through that line to start. To paint them up, then I'll get them going. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, with hobby time out of the way, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, some Age of Sigmar stuff. Um, but first, there's a very important thing that I need to make sure everybody's aware of. It's the time of release of this podcast. Please head over and pick up your copy of the Tortured Poets Department by Taylor Swift that released on April 19th when this podcast is releasing. I'm very excited about this album. I will probably stay up tonight and listen to it at midnight. So, if you want to take a little trip tomorrow, Chuck, um, just to let you know, um, the uh, Cleveland uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is uh, devoting tomorrow to a Taylor Swift Day. 
They are playing music through the rock hall, all from Taylor Swift, all day tomorrow. We're getting my daughter out of school early. Nice. She's going to leave around lunchtime. Um, she's going up. She's going to spend some time at the rock hall tomorrow, just uh, just immersing herself in it. So, hey, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna close the window here real quick. Um, I put on I put on my friendship bracelets from the concert here. All right, you know we'll we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, I, I I don't know if I'm gonna make that trip out there. It's a bit of a drive for that, but. Taylor Swift will be on all day tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> there is no doubt about Sounds it. Sounds like we all need it today. Yeah, we all need it. I do too, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I hope everyone out there survives the album, because uh, mm -hmm. it's probably going to be a heavy one. Mm -hmm. All right, anyway, back back to the news. Back to the news. We're here for uh, we're here, we're here for Taylor Swift. You know what? Just real quick. There, boom, at the concert again. Yeah, that flashed up. I haven't done that in a while. Okay. <laughs> all right, so first we're going to talk about the most boring thing. Age of Sigmar 3.0. We're gonna burn through this quick, Neil, because I know you don't care. Yeah. And <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> yeah, I know we were we were kind of talking in a chat. Everybody's just like, "Oh, look, they dropped the points on this." I'm like, <laughs> I just wanted to, you know, do my famous gif of the guy, guy shouting, "Who, who the, cares? Who the hell cares?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I love the fact that like w like people were screaming for that uh, that battle scroll for how long, right? And then we get oh. one like. <laughs> You know, it's what what I found even funnier was I saw people that were like TOs. They're just like, I hope they don't. I, this is this is worst timing ever. I have an event in like a week and a half, and I'm just like, I clearly saw you talking that like, where's the release the battle scroll? And now you're like, stop the battle scroll. I'm like, yeah. I, I I from everything that's going on, all of you war gamers out there, whether you're in my local group, online, y'all need to lock in. All right, tighten up. Right. Got a lot of problems with you people. And keep it up. You're going to hear about it. It's going to be Festivus. We're going to have a Festivus episode, all right? Just saying. We're going to have a Festivus episode. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'll bring the pole. <laughs> Shut up. Play Warhammer. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> cause Warhammer is cool. <laughs> Can we yep. all... Uh. All right, anyway. This uh, Battle Scroll stuff we forgot to put in the last one. That's what I'm calling this. <laughs> hey look look Blight, Blight kings two inches yeah okay that was a mess you know and the worst part about it is if this came like five months ago i'd have been super excited i'd be like let's go you know yep. like i don't know but yeah, once you get within four months of a new edition i just uh i'm glad it's there um mm -hmm. but the chances of me uh, bringing the blight kings out to actually utilize that is a uh, slim to none and i'm quite i'm hoping and um, once it goes to three inches in the new edition because i know that's what the case is um, I still don't have to worry about it. So. Yeah. Well, hey, you yeah. know what else is three inches now, Neil? Hmm. The great antlers on the Lariel the Ever Queen. Oh, really? They are. They are. And spite revenants are now also two inches. Look at that. Everybody's just everybody's just moving up in the world. Moving on up. If only Games Workshop could pass out inches like that to everybody. <laughs> but don't. <laughs> hey, but Flesh Eater Quartz got a update to their command trait, Cruel Taskmasters. I don't play that army. No one in the area I know plays that army regularly, so I'm not going to read it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't worry. Warhammer Weekly will cover this next week if you want in-depth knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure Rob over at Honest Wargamer has done this already. Mm -hmm. All right. What else we got? Grand Alliance Destruction. Nothing. Literally nothing. You get nothing, except... Except you no longer get to play with your savage orcs. Yes, that's what you get. Yes, you may not play with your savage orcs. <laughs> well, you, may, you, have a, you have a year with them. It's fine. That's true. It's fine. Okay, that's so true. points changes. I I know you didn't care. Points changes are always fun because at least makes me want to list build. And Sigmar list building isn't as exciting as old world list building. So if I'm diving back into list building on Sigmar, I would consider it exciting. Mm -hmm. Have I dove back into list building everything? Mm -hmm. No. Just my daughters of Cain, because it's the I only would just thing like I'm going to gonna point play. Out to uh, to Big M out there, the code right went down ten points because who cares? <laughs> because the code right sucks. Yes, <laughs> he doesn't go on any of my lists. No, no, just say no to the code right. Thank you yeah. very much. Uh, yeah, I, I say I, we'll call out some stuff here. Um, uh, let's see. Um, Daughters of Cain, which looks like that's the only one I looked at because the rest I'm not gonna like. I I have one more 3.0 event, and that's really it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like I'll play. I I have and I have like maybe like five, four to five more campaign games with my Cities of Sigmar, but like it's all about Daughters of Cain for me right now. Mm -hmm. um, Bladewind went down. I don't use it anyway. That's fine. It's 20 points. 
which is nice now because it's in that sweet spot of, well, I'll take it because I got nothing else to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, my, some, my snakes went down 10 each. That's fine. The Medusa went down 10. The Bloodwreck Viper went down to 50. Still feels a little expensive, but who cares because it's going to get rewritten anyway. Uh, mm -hmm. The two most exciting parts, Doomfire Warlocks and Witch Elves, both down 10. They are cheap as chips, and you can take them as Battleline and Cthusa's Crone Seer army, uh, which I think is the army I'm going to take. I'm not sure. Or I might just do Witch Elf spam. I, I, I might just take every Witch Elf I can on the board again and just be like, here we go. This is what we're doing. Yeah. Do it. Yeah. Do just it. just like, I, 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 if I'm going to lose all these five games, you're not going to enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the list. Now, oh, granted, I have merged a bunch of elves around to other armies and gave some to some friends but i mm -hmm. i still have enough to cause a headache um neil th th you didn't care about any other points yourself did you anything you wanted to call out here no enough of the things i looked at a little a little bit were caradron points happy to see the uh um the endron master with the dirigible come down 10 that was nice i feel like that's that's needed to have happened for mm -hmm. quite some time um i i think it's kind of funny that the sky wardens went down 10 and the engine riggers finally went up. Uh, just further proof, again, Big M, the engine riggers are better than Sky Wars. There you go. There you go. <laughs> We've been having this debate for like, uh, I don't know, two years now. But um, uh, yeah, so I mean, in the end, I feel like if I was to make a Caradron list right now with these changes, maybe not much has changed as far as my list would go. I, I did I peek know. at all my lists, and they were all sitting at like 19. 70 1960 at worst so like it didn't really do too much yeah I, th I i think this is just more at the end like hey let's have some fun everybody right the, like yeah. we don't oh. need to track this anymore right so <laughs> you got your points i will say one of the nice things is and and, and if i if i can be a little bit diplomatic here Please. is that if you want to go back and play third edition just like chuck and i play eighth edition fantasy sometimes because chuck really likes eighth edition fantasy i do um i have no problem with eighth edition fantasy i like it as well um but if you want to go back and play an old edition it is nice that they're trying to get a little bit of rebalance in right at the end that's very true it is very you know? true it's it's so, yeah i mean still you own all the books you own the rule book you own the models for those of you who are kind of a little butthurt about certain models go away if you want to go back and play the old edition all right, you know, you got a little bit of extra balance there right at the end. So there you go. Mm -hmm. Um Yeah, that, that's that's a very good that's a very good viewpoint on that too. That's you know, it's here, you can go play it. This is the final balancing. They did say this is the last one, obviously. Um mm -hmm. so this is what we got the ride or die till the end of it. Um so yeah, three point wrapped up, Neil. Mm -hmm. Um also uh on the page there was also some like minor updates to like the army stuff too i didn't look at it i think it's mostly stuff that they covered in the battle scroll maybe like a few things here and there um but i didn't look at it because it was like whatever <laughs> mm. <laughs> daughters of cain wasn't wasn't new so i didn't have to, i didn't have to care now real quick we're gonna we're gonna go back to just me and you for a second here neil mm. so there, there's the battle scroll um it was, it's fine it's fine <laughs> it's fine. It is fine. Yeah, and it, to be honest, I think everybody'd be more upset if it was a huge sweeping change out of nowhere for no reason. Mm -hmm. Plus, I did think the name's kind of fun—the impending vermin doom. Like, okay, <laughs> like it's coming. Like, how do we know it's mm -hmm. coming? So, three point it's wrapped up, Neil. Mm -hmm. I mean, we still got some months of gaming going. What did you think of three point Overall, I know I've, if, uh, if you're fans of this podcast, you've been listening for a long time. This has not been my favorite edition. I would say my favorite edition of Age of Sigmar is uh, probably uh, somewhere between one and two. So uh, probably pushing it to. Um, yeah, I'd definitely say two. Uh, it, it's not been my favorite. I'm very excited for the changes in 4.0, even though I haven't seen all the rules yet. Um, so we'll wait and see there. But I'm very, very optimistic. Um, that this is this edition will be more to my liking than the last one. We'll, we'll preview some um, more rules here soon about it that we just we have to go through. But right. yeah, but w would you consider 3.0 a success, failure? Which I mean, do you want to give it a grade like A through F? 
You know, I'd probably, if I'm being honest, um, as far as my enjoyment of the mechanics and playing the game, I would give it a C is what would come in for me. Um, the reason why I would give it a C is because I felt like some of the rules that were meant to make the game more strategic kind of bogged it down. I felt like there was, uh, we could have done things a little bit differently than what were done, right? We brought in new coherency rules, and I think that changed fundamentally um, how the units were going to be on the table, but then we kept the holy within bubbles and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, I was never a huge fan of the way command abilities worked and who could, who got the command ability and who issued and who received and all that kind of stuff. Like, I just want to use a command ability and just say, Hey, these guys have this command ability and let's move on. Right. Like, I don't need to know that the general has this, this thing. And I got to keep track. The fact that he's got one of these, right. <laughs> and yeah. that, you know, if I don't put this little token on that guy, I'm never going to remember it, you know, and this right. and that. Um, so it's like little minutia like that, that kind of when I'm playing the game in like a tournament scenario as as a casually competitive player, um, I don't want to screw that kind of stuff up. And then it kind of looks like, oh, well, this guy was trying to get one over on me. Like, no, I just literally I don't worry about that stuff when I'm I'm playing these games. So I hardly ever think about it, you know. So uh, like I just get my command points and I'm like, oh, I've got three command points. Perfect, you know. Uh, but then when I go play in a tournament, then like, you have to remember that kind of stuff, you know. Right. And so that battle tactics uh, we've we've rehashed that so much on this podcast you know we, we didn't enjoy battle tactics they're back again hopefully in a better we'll see them in a better light um yeah we'll find out <laughs> find out here soon yeah I yeah so um <laughs> they're here to stay in one one way or another um so i didn't really enjoy that too much um the scenarios and things were okay i felt like the general's handbooks came out too fast and were too I really didn't like, okay, wizards are good. Okay, monsters are good. Okay, this is good. Like, why don't we just make the game good? Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I just, you know, I, I don't know. I didn't I didn't need that. That right. wasn't that wasn't something I really enjoyed. Again, then that came with, you know, your different battalions and things. You know, when, when 3.0 first came out, everybody was excited. Like, oh, great. Everybody gets the same battalions and everybody can kind of use that. It was, that's one of the drawbacks about 2.0, which I didn't like was the battalions were just all over the place. Right. But you paid, so this but you paid, points, you paid points for them. So it was a way you could you still did. balance. You, you could, cause I liked it cause you could balance it within the army's internal balance. Whereas the universals I feel are just always going to give someone something better. Right. Unfortunately, even yeah. though they're free. And you know, and before it was, it was, well, did your army book have a really good battalion, right? right? So that took care of that a little bit, but they, they did present their own issues as well, even just based on what units you had in your army books. So now like, oh, well, I can get to a one drop real easy in this army, but this army over here, I want this other stuff. Ah, now that makes it a little bit harder for me. It was, it's never with these battalions. It's just, it makes it very hard. Looks like 4.0 is going to help that scenario a little bit, but we'll see. Well, um, we'll I'm see. not convinced. It will completely go away. I mean, but, um, we're not gonna we're not gonna judge something till we've seen it all and have played right. it. Um, I mean, time yeah. will tell. Like to be honest, I was really excited for 3.0 when it was coming out and during the early mm -hmm. playtesting. But like at what it evolved into over time with the GHBs and seeing the book battle tactics really come to their own form. Um, yeah, it definitely wasn't my favorite. Um, 2.0 was my favorite edition, uh, hands down. I just I loved everything about it. I like the re I like the rerolls. I'm an elf. I like rerolls. Go figure. Um, yeah. But you know you can't dismiss the fact that this was the most by by stats on competitive gaming. This was the most balanced Warhammer we have ever seen. Hmm. Yeah. If um, I could throw one more thing in there on yeah. the uh, you know you just kind of reminded me too. Um, we get we did get rid of rerolls right, and then yeah. we added something that I felt <sighs> was so generic. You know, and, and, and so often used with the all out attack and all out defense. I remember when they initially put this out, the all out attack and all out defense was in yeah. the, um, when they came, I guess it was a general's handbook. And that was the handbook where they did the anvil of apotheosis, where you could make your own guys or whatever. Yeah. You yeah, could yeah. give 
command abilities. And the command abilities were all out attack and all out defense. And I just remember seeing that and I'm like, I still have some nightmares about <laughs> a one up re rolling Star Drake, you know, the, uh, you know, re rolling ones, you know, whatever it was, two up re rolling ones. I don't know. Um, but it, I, I, I've just never liked just being like, oh, okay, so why, why not just have the stat one lower for the to hit? <laughs> you know, like if you're going to use it every single time, right. Just, just have the stat one lower. And I know you can only use it on one unit and all the rest of that, but right. I just, I just didn't like that style of that, that mechanic, I guess. So, yeah, it's, it, it is the most boring of the command abilities, like the, mm. all, the all attack and all defense. I, I, yeah. they're there I to me. You need it. Get rid of it. You know, just use what's on the war scroll and then have something that's a little bit more, flavorful going on you know sure i mean yeah, flavor is what we want out of this too but no like i said it, it's there was definitely hits and misses there's things i didn't like i mean as, it, as you've called out if you're listening to us at all you know i love grand strategies and hate battle tactics and i hate battalions mm-hmm. um but i love how this game was balanced in the end um with win rates everything seemed to be well within line and then and as books were coming out uh they weren't just jumping to the top because you know that was the problem we had in 2.0 a new book came out Boom, top, top, top. How do we get it down? How do we get it down? Um, mm-hmm. But there's also a thing too, like, you know, kudos to that for being like the most balanced war game ever from what I can see. Um, yeah. However, personally, I like more asymmetrical. So that's why I like fantasy and that stuff. I don't need a balanced war game to have my fun. But some people mm-hmm. do. So success. I said, I'm with you. I'd probably give it like a C, C minus um, for my personal um, as far as overall, I would give it a probably a B minus. I'd give it up a grade um, mm-hmm. because people played it a lot. I just looked uh, at least because I tracked my daughter's cane play tally. Um, mm-hmm. I have played more daughters of cane actually in 3.0 than 2.0 by like mm-hmm. one game right now. <laughs> and it'll go up a little bit. Um, but, you know, to me, it's like, OK, well, it wasn't stopping me from playing it, even though 2.0 is my favorite yeah. but yeah. you know people were playing it they, they the only thing keeping it back too is like it was just way too bloated and mm-hmm. you couldn't bring people into it easily so but hey that's fine that's where that's mm-hmm. where 3.0 sits i still have one more event to go through and a couple more games uh neil maybe i'll get one or two more games in with it who knows or you might just be yeah. you might be old world rider die now i don't know i kind of am until fourth ed I, like i'm i'm having so much fun with that that uh we're just gonna ride this wave until the new shiny comes along that's fair that's fair well, let's talk about the new shiny then. So, let's talk about how battle traits and battle formations shape your army in hashtag new AOS. Are you ready for this? <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> All right. Um, so, wait, we didn't we didn't cover this one, right? No, no, we didn't. No, okay. we didn't. Okay, <laughs> I always have to check the dates because like it's like I try to set them aside early, but I always screw up. All right. So the way you build armies has changed, Neil. This new edition. Uh, everything, everything you you build, priority roll, command point economy, it's all different. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Heroes and the retinues, retinues, bleh. Um, so yeah, new, new list building. So with battle traits, uh, widespread abilities for unique ar- unique to your army. Some of these will feel similar to existing rules, but they've been tightened up. Uh, for instance, Stormcast have four different battle traits that apply to the army as a whole. While heroic actions are gone, many of those ideas live on, and their finest hour continues to power up a Stormcast Eternal unit for a turn. Now, when I first saw this, I was excited, Neil, because I thought we were going to start getting the faction-specific articles. Mm-hmm. But this is this is this is a trick. While this is all about Stormcast and gives us a lot about Stormcast, this is more about the battle traits and battle as opposed to Stormcast faction specific please mm-hmm. please give us the faction specific stuff soon that's all i want how's my yeah. play get me hyped up you can lie to me it's fine mm-hmm. all right so stormcast they still have finest hour uh but it's a friendly stormcast eternals unit um for the rest of the turn add one to wound rolls and add one to save characteristics so it's just finest hour as it as we know it now but it's not a mm-hmm. hero it's a unit so it can be the unit's finest hour which makes sense because um the units, every every Stormcast is a hero. So this is flavorful to me. I don't hate it. 
Well, I feel like they should have named it uh, Best Day Ever because that's what I call it every time. So that I can never nice. remember that it's actually called Their Finest Hour. So <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna remain Best Day Ever for me. But right. it's yeah, just Stormcast. Like... Only Stormcast have the best days ever. Everybody else, you're done. Sure. You've had your best mm-hmm. days. They're behind you. Yep. All right, and we also have Signs of the Storm returns to uh, as a way to blast gleaming silver warriors. Notice how they call out silver. Notice how they're mm-hmm. pushing the Hallow <laughs> Knights real hard right now. Also, mm-hmm. um, what's really interesting, the Hallowed Knights were the ones in the um, uh, trailer, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, yep. ha- okay. And it was, yeah, Hammerhall. It, it, it's, it's just weird because like I'm, you're so used to seeing them in just Gyran. To see them in Az- in uh, actually was really interesting. Now, the more I think back on it, they were in um, uh, so in Broken Realms, I believe it was uh, <clears throat> they were in Shaman. They so they, yeah they that's they, where uh, that's before the uh, cities were established. Before they had yeah, Lord Castle Grim uh, meets his end in that terrible, yeah. terrible way for that guy to die. By the way, went way too easy. Yeah, but uh, like they're around, yeah. but like they're they're usually at their home bases mm-hmm. in Gyran. Mm-hmm. Fighting off Nurgle as they do. All right, sorry, I just saw it's weird to call them Silver Warriors. Like, are are the what the Golden Boys dead now? <laughs> well, I think uh, I they, they mentioned this on Warhammer Weekly, but uh, it's a much better paint scheme, really. Oh, it is. It so, is one hundred percent. If if know. these. Because the thing is, when I was first painting my storm castles, before they gave us clear indication of these chambers, of these different mm-hmm. storm hosts, I guess. And if and it, it was shortly after, but like I had already had my army painted, I would have hundred percent been hallowed knights. Then my own custom scheme. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, Hands my uh, storm cast sitting on the shelf right there, all uh, base sprayed uh, metal, so silver. Yeah. So. Yep. And anyway. honestly, uh, they are incredibly easy to paint. Yes. When you spray the entire model silver. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the gold ones are too, but it's just, yeah, I wish I wish I would have had that beforehand because now I just have my own custom chamber, but hey, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. So anyway, Silver Warriors in a thick battle of bolts of lightning now applies to all Stormcast Eternal armies rather than needing to pick between this ability and territory holding pow- prowess of the Storm Keeps. As a movement phase ability, it's paired with the deployment ability of the Celestial Realm, allowing you to, to keep your units in high as year before battle. Okay, so we're not... Now that this is a worrying moment for me, does that mean we're losing flavor because we don't have Storm Keeps or the Celestial Realm ones? Or Signs of the Storm, whatever you want to call them? Looks like uh, that's the case to me. <clears throat> yeah, and I like that's, that, that's my only concern I have of anything. Everything else will be fine, but like I just don't want to lose flavor. We lose the flavor of this. That's like of the characters and the lore in the background. That's what I care about. That's where I'll be like, eh. and I see it in 40k. That's why I'm nervous. Um, mm-hmm. But time will tell. Okay. So anyway, deployment phase, celestial realm. Uh, if there are more friendly, if, if there are more friendly stormcast turtles on the battlefield than there are set up in reserve, pick a friendly stormcast turtles unit that's not been deployed. Set it up unit in the reserve and celestial realms that's not been deployed. So it actually counts as deployment. And you have to have more on the battlefield than in reserve. So you can't put your whole army in the sky. It's fine. Mm-hmm. And then Signs of the Storms, how you bring them down uh, in the movement phase. Pick a friendly Stormcast unit in the Celestial Realm. Set up on a battlefield anywhere more than 9 inches from all enemy units. Nice and simple. So, And I do that. I, I always like the Lightning Strike ones too, because that's more thematic to me. But still. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean I'm not worried about the, the lack of uh, flavor. All right, and then we have some other battle traits and may, commands may be associated with such, such as Heaven Sent. This powerful once-per-battle ability can return a destroyed unit to the battlefield at half strength, ready to smash aside enemies of Sigmar once again. So... I really I really like this, actually. Okay. So yeah. um, there was an old piece of lore on the Stormcast. I mean, this is goes way back. And it was... Um, Archeon was attacking some storm cast keep or whatever and archeon's not making any headway because every time like they're killing storm cast but literally they just keep on pounding down you know in the lightning coming back coming back coming back and apparently there's like a there's a priest somewhere praying to sigmar and that's what's what's causing all these guys to just keep right on reinforcing everybody 
Um, yeah. So then he kills that guy, and then you know he wins. But uh, <laughs> either way, I mean, the the visual of it was pretty sweet, you know. So right. And, um, I like yeah, and, and to be honest, like if I look at like the units coming back at half strength and all that sort of stuff, which is kind of what this ability is. Mm -hmm. It was frustrating as hell with uh, death armies and frustrating as hell yeah. with goblin armies. Yeah. I don't. You ever... have to be careful with recursion, right? I mean, right. it is a super bad feel, right? When you spend a lot of time and a lot of effort to kill something and then watch it show right back up again, because then really what you did was nothing. Right. Right. And it's even worse whenever you are hoping you don't kill the last two goblins in a 30 man block so half of them don't come back. Right. Like, no, it's a war game. You should kill, want to kill everything. So, right, and, right. Said, and and storm like once this is once per battle. Yep. That's that's perfect. That's easy. Also, it's on Stormcast. Mm -hmm. it has so to be there's not going to be a ton of models. Now, granted, you could probably double reinforce something, and but again, you can well, only do maximum of one double reinforce, right? Yeah. So, um, it shouldn't be egregious. Well, actually, no. There's no double reinforce anymore. You just reinforce one. Right, exactly. Yeah. So you can only reinforce one. Right. So. so well, you can reinforce whatever you want, but you can only reinforce once. So I can have yeah, ten units of ten liberators if the points exist, but I can't have a unit of fifteen. Um, so best you're getting back five liberators at okay. at best, because Stormcast that's I think that's going to be the biggest unit is five watt. I bet. Yep. Um, but you mm -hmm. pick a friendly non-unique Stormcast Eternals infantry or cavalry. So it'll be interesting to see what the cavalry is. Um, mm -hmm. like some things will be like the. Dracos and stuff like I the, I doubt the um storm drakes are but maybe they mm -hmm. are um uh you pick one of those two units that started the battle with two or more models and has been destroyed to be the target set up a replacement with half the number of those models from the target rounding up more nine inches from all enemies so it's cool I don't mind it in a storm cast because it's impactful it's like, okay, send someone else down right now. They need it sent. Or maybe like the guys and gals that, you know, just got killed were sent up and they hammered them on the anvil. It's like, get back down there real quick. Mm -hmm. However you want to do it. All right. So then we move on to battle formations. You also be able to pick battle formation when constructing your army. These work like sub-factions of old. So I'm excited for this. And exemplify the way a specific force might do battle to represent specific tactics it employs. But they're no longer tied to particular color scheme, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay. No one was doing that anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, each faction pack, the deck of cards released alongside a new edition contains battle formations. So you can learn or can lean into particular strategies and experiment with new army options from the start. So faction pack cards, that's fun because those are actually really nice for 40k when that came out. I mean, I, the armies I have don't have every book out, so... Those cards are really nice. And what I can say is if you want those cards, as soon as they come out for sale, buy them. They mm -hmm. go away quick and they don't come back. Granted, you'll be able to print these all out, but they're so much more useful. So mm -hmm. cool. Um, I'm glad we're getting that, but, you know, four battle formations per army. Cool. All right, so four mini sub, sub, sub factions of new. I see. So, Stormcast, we're going to look at the Thunderhost. Prioritizes mixing and matching units from various chambers with its synchronized strikes passive ability, empowering warrior chamber units in combat while they're within 12 inches of a unit from a different chamber. Holy with it. Holy with it. Sorry. Yeah. No, it just, well, it, the, the wording in the article says within 12. Hmm. Uh, the wording on the ability says holy within 12. <laughs> <laughs> so, what is synchronized strikes? Effect, add one to the hit rolls for combat attacks made by friendly warrior chamber units while they're wholly within 12 inches of a friendly non-hero Stormcast Eternals units that do not have warrior chamber keyword. So, okay, you get an ability if you're having a mixed chamber army. That's fine. I don't mind that. That's encouraging. So I guess this is supposed to look like uh, these guys are kind of, I don't know, bodyguarding the other units? I don't know. No, I, I think it's, um, it, it, it's just more of to be like, like if you read the, the lore on it, the core of a Thunderhead host is often made up from fighters from the Warrior Chamber, having trained relentlessly with the sworn brethren of their Stormhouse. They operate like a well-oiled cog for. Really, this is this is just a, trying to encourage you to not just spam units. Hey, yeah. if you mm -hmm. bring enough mix to bring an army that looks like an army instead of just spamming stuff, you get a benefit. To me, like that's very encouraging. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I'm sure there's a way to break this, and we'll figure it out later. <laughs> I'm sure, yeah. Okay. Uh, Storm Drake Guard, Dracothian Guard, and other warriors or heroes are the Extremist Chamber. They battle with the Lightning Echelon. Their oncoming storm ability, uh, one unit per turn, the strike first effect in combat on a roll of 3+. plus. This kind of flexibility extends across the factions, and we'll be seeing more of what they can do, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so this one is definitely up Chuck's alley, because you have to gamble. <laughs> So you pick one of the friendly extremist chamber units that charge on a three plus. The unit has strike first for the rest of the turn. So you pick one, one per turn, on your army. Okay, that's fine. Uh, mm -hmm. The only downside for this I see is I would rather do this first one <laughs> than gamble. You know, if I'm trying to win an event, mm -hmm. uh, three plus is 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 a gamble. Like I said it's I like it because it's fun, makes it more exciting, but. You know, I, I worry that are they going to make, like you said, I think you called out earlier, is there going to be the really good stuff, really bad stuff? Yeah. Well, my phosphorite bomblets will let you know the perils of a two plus. So a three <laughs> plus, you know, you're, you're taking your life in your own hands there. Yep. Okay. And that covers this article. So we get to see a little bit about what's going on there. That's fun. Then we get to talk about combat, Neil. Oh, boy. Mm -hmm. Combat. Let's see. Changes to commands mean that counter charge and power through are powerful new tools. Neil, I know you love power through. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that I read it and I actually got it right, it doesn't seem as bad. Right, right. I, I know. Well, we, we're good. Okay, we've seen every Minter now comet range is three inch radius. Simple change. I like it. That, that's so great. That's wonderful. Um, yeah, so, soother, more smoother, more satisfying combat. I mean, really, what we're doing is with the range and the half inch coherency, just get movement trays and put them in ranks of, uh, you know, put like five wide, you know what I mean, Neil, you, you follow me here? It makes <laughs> yeah, it, makes, yeah. make, it'll make it much quicker and easier. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. So combat age Sigmar, uh, players familiar with the edition. Uh, we'll see the process is very similar. Units still charge in the combat and fight. Now there's a way the abilities work a little differently. Okay. So charge, Pick a friendly unit that's not in combat, does not use run or retreat this turn, and then they make a 2d6 charge. The unit can move a distance up to the value of the charge roll. The unit can move through the combat ranges of all enemy units and must end the move within half inch of a visible enemy unit. If this does so, the unit using the ability has charged. So I like that little bit add a visible at the end there. Because mm -hmm. I don't care about the measurement. You're behind a wall. I can't see you. <laughs> nice. So you yep. can use... It makes terrain a little bit more impactful. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. So, Neil, we've charged. So, next mm -hmm. up is fight. So, declare. So, pick a friendly unit that is in combat or that has charged this turn to use this ability. It's weird that fight's an ability, but it is. <laughs> the unit can make a pile and move. Then, if the unit is in combat, you must pick one or more enemy units that's in target target with units attack resolve combat attacks against the target blah 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 so you fight that's great mm -hmm. um uh, you know three inch range will make it easier uh i do like here that it's very well clearly defined that if you charged or count as charging you get a pile in move that's great mm -hmm. instead of it being like is it do you do we, are we doing that again i i forget but it's great but some interesting changes here. Here's where it's going to get a little different for us. The order of operations is much clearer in this edition. Uh, there's no more start of phase or end of phase subphases. In each phase, the active player uses any of their abilities in which the order they want, and then their opponent can do the same. So, Neil, if we both have abilities, it's not... Mm -hmm. it, it, I mean, it's the stack. Controlling player gets, gets to do all of theirs first. Mm -hmm. Then the opponent can do all of theirs. It's very smooth. One downside, I just charged. I want to get into fights. Hold on. Let's do all of our abilities first. It's the only thing. Once again, yep. we have monsters. It's not monsters reactions, but it's... Hold on. We got, like... <laughs> and I don't know how widespread these are. Assume every army's going to have one or two, at least. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm in combat. I want to fight now. Hold on. Let me pop my abilities, then you pop your abilities. Yeah. It, it's pretty easy. It, yeah. It's, it's easy. It's clean. But it will kind of, like, take that moment. Like, hold on. We don't get to actually fight yet. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, the good side is there's a lot of abilities like we see here on the shield bash for the Ard boys that just do damage. 
Right. So I'm not, <laughs> imagine this is also things like chariots charging in, doing that D3, more, you know, whatever it used to be, whatever it will be now. Um, but all right. So anyway, with the two options we have here, hard boys, with the shield bash. Uh, so they pick an enemy unit in combat with uh, that. Well, sorry. Pick an enemy unit in combat with this unit and that has charged to be the target. Okay, so you these guys get charged. Great. You make a shield bash roll of a d6 for each mod in this unit. For each 6+, plus, one mortal damage on the target. So big hefty shield, you charge in, I do damage to you because of that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That's fun. It's doing damage. It's neat. It makes sense. Uh, it, it makes it go very clearly that uh, these guys are supposed to be your big beefy <laughs> boys that take the charges. It's giving unit ro rolls, which is great to see. Mm -hmm. Like these guys want to be charged. They're they're your anvil. Yep. And where this so uh, so if you look at this next ability, so you got crystal touch. Um, this is uh, the blood sisters. Declare pick an enemy unit in combat with this unit to be the target. Um, roll a dice. If the roll exceeds the target's health characteristic, the target has strike last for the rest of the turn. So what you can see here is if uh, these blood sisters charge the Ard boys and. Uh, well, I mean, let's let's go the other way. Um, that has, uh, no, wait, I look. guess it's not going to work that yeah, way. Look. But you can yeah. kind of see where the stack is coming, right? Yeah. So the blue side charge, um, the blue side charge, then. Right. So if if the blood sisters charged in, right, mm -hmm. they're going to use their effect first, right, and then the shield bash will come next. So even though they're striking last, you could still do damage prior to striking last with your abilities which i like i do like that yeah so that's where i was trying to get to and took me a while but we got there so <laughs> the only thing i'm gonna call out here on the art boys it says roll a d6 on crystal touch it says roll a dice now i'm a cheaty elf i'm bringing a d100 <laughs> doesn't say what kind of dice i need to roll here unless it's in the core rules it's just roll a dice right. all right so yeah there you go <laughs> That's what's, that's, <laughs> rules is written, Chuck. Rules, rules is written. As, it's all we got to work on right now. I don't know their intentions. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like I said, that, the, the, only, the only concern for me with this, it's not even a concern. It's just like, it, will, it's, will it make it take the oomph out of the um, uh, the getting to the fight phase, which is what's important? Like like how monstrous reactions were always like, oh, I forgot to do this. Hold on. Oh, I forgot. Like, we'll see. But hopefully, because it's cleaner and simpler, no one forgets it. You move through it much, much faster. Yeah, yeah. I think you're always gonna in a game with rules and lots of rules. You're always gonna have something that's gonna come up where somebody's want to do a take back, and that's you know. Yeah. Happens. Happens in my games. Happens in everybody's games. Mm -hmm. But also, I'm excited that Bloodstalkers are my chaff kill, chaff hunters now. If they still have mm. like a, a decent movement like they have in currently, where it's eight inches. Yeah. Boy, I'd like to see them chase down some chaff because it's easy to make them strike last, and then I. You know, if they're anywhere half decent as what they are now, they can kill chaff pretty mm -hmm. easily. So nice. Yeah. Unit unit rule rolls is what's really exciting here. All right. Um uh, do, do, do. there is still all attack, all defense, as uh mentioned Neil. Now, mm -hmm. here's a fun thing. Units cannot make shooting attacks if they are in combat, unless their weapons have the shoot in combat ability. So tagging missile unit is a great opportunity for counterplay. I like that. Because I've heard people out there mm -hmm. uh, talk about how, oh, the skill the skill floor is changing, blah 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 blah. <clears throat> you just have to. It's a yeah. it's a different skill set for me now. It's understanding unit roles and what things do. Because oh yeah, I want to turn off that shooting. Like that's what we do in mm -hmm. in fantasy. That's why I have a I have something coming down on your back line to take out your war machines. Yeah, same thing. You want to in, in fantasy. You want to get your. Uh get uh, those casters into combat so that they can't dispel, you know? Mm-hmm. Yep. So I, that's a, that's probably the biggest change I think we've seen to the role, rules so far. Uh, and I like it. I, I'm assuming, we haven't seen otherwise, that you can still shoot into a combat if you're not in the combat. Mm -hmm. That doesn't bother me as much, but yeah. She, but, uh, you know, also the fact that we have the ability to shoot in the enemy shooting phase with, for CP... Mm -hmm. with that minus one stuff so if you're about to be charged and will lose that shooting attack 
you're definitely going to want to take that shoot yeah that those shots while you can right sure yeah so you know i, I think it's gonna be interesting to see i'm sure the ko are gonna have some ways around this <laughs> they might have mm -hmm. a lot of shoot in combat i bet i bet um uh what's the core troop for ko uh, that's oh Jesus, uh, Arcanauts. <laughs> Arcanauts. I bet because they have like little pistols. Mm -hmm. I bet they have shooting yeah. combat. I bet. Yeah, I, I bet. I could so. feel. Yeah, but Gunstruck yeah. Thunderers probably mm -hmm. not. Yeah, they have a bigger gun. I don't know, but oh yeah, hell no. Yeah, I wouldn't think so. Yeah, and if I'm sorry, if you're an elf player with a bow, you're probably not shooting in combat. Legolas will disagree with you, but he didn't write these rules. <laughs> 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 Neil combat ability sequence does it make sense to you it's on screen right now active player yeah opponent player then you alternating fight active player first mm -hmm. clean easy so yeah that's alternate using fight abilities yeah so you're doing all your combat phase abilities across the board and then you're alternating right mm -hmm. and, and i'm curious now here's the thing we might find that each combat ability only really affects the, the single fight it's in and if it's you might just like let's just do this fight do all this you know what i mean <laughs> like mm -hmm. like who knows like it might like, i'll strike yeah. first strike last how much that's prevalent will change that but like there might be ways to speed this up even as you're playing at least at least with casual games i will say pile in seems a lot easier now yep i'm scrolling so, down to oh, it now. pile in uh yeah, let's, let's, let's talk about that. As part of the fight ability, allowing models to move up to three inches. Every model in that unit must end the move no further from the target unit than it was before piling in and must still be in combat with every unit it started the move engaged in combat with. So um, really, I mean, combined with the three-inch range and everything, you're not having to worry too, too much about, you know, having a unit on one side of your your unit and a unit on the other side, and now you can't pile in. Well, you can still just pile in. You just have to target one of them and, and keep somebody, you know, within range of the other unit as well. So, mm -hmm. and it's, yeah, and so with, I think that just makes it a little bit easier. Not to mention with the three-inch range, mm -hmm. I, you're not going to get, you can't get away. You're going to be hit by two things. If, like, mm -hmm. you get that little, little wombo combo going against your unit, Guess what? You're gonna hit by both things. You can't get away from it. That's fine with me. Yeah, it's this yep. is cleaner. You're right. Yep, yep, that's fine. Fight, fight, fight. Fight, fight, fight. Um, this is pretty simple. Uh, we are still capping the all out defense to plus one at most. I like that. Mm -hmm. Uh, they did say that safe stacking is mostly a thing of the past because it's been tampered down. Um, good. Uh, I, I, to me also, I'd rather not to have to worry about capping at plus one, I'd rather just be so limited that you don't have to worry mm -hmm. about it. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, and then, uh, uh, like critical hits, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Unmodified, unmodified roll to six. Mm -hmm. our, our crit hits. Go ahead. Go. Yeah. Um, uh, turn can tra trigger a range of new effects on attacks while mortal wounds have been renamed mortal damage. Sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know what IP reasons you need to change that, but fine. I mean, if you're brand new to this game, that'll be a fine transition for you. If you've been playing it for nine years, you're going to call mortal wounds. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way I'm not going to do that. I don't have the brain power to, uh, to make that switch, unfortunately. Yep. And then we do have this nice thing, too. Uh, we've all been it. It's never bothered any of us. But if you were, you know, playing like a persnickety person or on a top table, it mattered. Um, the unit takes the wounds and you remove one whenever you hit that cap. So if I have Stormcast and they have three wounds each, uh, unit of five of them, I just put, oh, I took two wounds. I put it next to the unit. It does not matter that it's next to the champion, the musician, whatever you want. As mm -hmm. soon as I hit that cap of three, I remove whatever model I want, as long as I do not break coherency on myself. That's so nice, yeah. It, that's very clean. That's that's a great. But sometimes, like, I pile in, and I'm like, wait a second, which which wound was this on? Which guy? You know? Yeah. And no, like That it, is nice. Yeah, so many times, too, where it's just like, uh, sorry, I'm just going to put my champ, champion back because I'm dumb. And everybody's like, yeah, it's fine. 
unless you're at a tournament, then it might be like, no, mm-hmm. sorry. And it's like, you know, you just take your losses and move on. <laughs> mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. that's good. Now, Neil, do you want to talk about unit rolls a little bit sure. here? Go for it. <clears throat> with combat range gone, you might have some questions about how a warrior with a hammer is set apart from one with a spear. This has been handled by further differentiating the role of each unit on the battlefield. Weapon and war scroll abilities now provide units with specific roles. Take the bristling spear wall of Stormcast Eternal Vindicator as an example. They have anti-charge, Ren plus one as a weapon ability, granting additional Ren when they are charged, while they have the opportunity to strike first if they successfully hold the shield wall. Now that... Hold the shield wall being... If this unit did not charge this turn and it is combat with an enemy unit uh, that charged this turn, roll a dice. On a four plus, this unit has strike first for the rest of the turn. So spears get charged, they get an additional rend, and Stormcast specifically have a chance to strike first, mm-hmm. it seems. Yep. That's great. That's, yeah, that's awesome. Cool. I mean, yeah, you don't want to charge spears. <laughs> that's why right. spears were right. invented. Not... To not... So yeah. <laughs> Doesn't, doesn't sound like a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> also, Vindicators. Two attacks, threes and threes, one rend, one damage. Ooh. So they get charged. Two attacks, threes and threes. Minus mm-hmm. two, one damage. Give them yep. all out, all out attack. Two attacks, twos and threes. Minus two, one damage. And hey, just for the heck of it, finest hour. Two attacks, twos and twos, minus two, one damage if they're charged. And they might be swinging first. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. Um, Stormcast feel like Stormcast. Like they should. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, it'll depend on what everything else feels like. <laughs> That's true. If my witch elves can do the same thing, it might be a little bit... Uh, take... <laughs> yeah. That's good. But, but right now, I love how Stormcast feel just from the basic mm-hmm. rules and what i can understand from this yep. they feel like they should be that's great and i'm yeah and, and i'm hoping because like in 2.0 the one thing and even 1.0 it seemed like everything was based around the liberator like that was the the level and you went up and down from there mm-hmm. i hope we don't do that this time i hope the level is cities of sigmar if we're going to do about if we have to have like a core unit to focus on the basic human should be it not the stormcast now because that way stormcast yeah. will feel yeah, like stormcast 100 percent. Mm-hmm. nice Ooh, neil do you want to tell us about uh brutal blows and anti-infantry yeah. plus one sure let's talk about greater combat range and no battle shock makes seething hordes of clan rats and crypt ghouls more dangerous but monstrous infantry like Croxagore love to cut a bloody swath through these teeming mobs. Their anti-infantry plus one rend devastates armor, while the Brutal Blow's passive ability can pulverize four bodies in a single swing, and they get four attacks. That's so you got a Drake Bite Maul, which is four attacks, four plus, two plus, rend one, damage two. And you're going to add addition, additional rend if you are attacking infantry. And then you've got the Moonstone Hammer, which is four attacks, three plus two plus, rend one, damage three, anti-infantry plus one rend. So um, each one of these, uh, each model in the unit is armed with a Drake Bite Maul, and one out of those can be, uh, so basically the uh, well, champion. Says, it, says, it says one third, and this is a unit of three, so if you reinforce it to six, two of them can oh, one third, it. yeah. Yeah, 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 one third. Is that one third or is it one out of three? I don't know. That means the same either way. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, well, that's, yeah, it's getting late. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. But yeah, brutal blows add one to the damage of this unit's melee weapons for attacks mm-hmm. that target enemy of 10 or more. That's a great horde of uh, uh, a scaven you have there. It'd be a shame if I killed half of it with one mm-hmm. unit of three. Right. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Yeah. Very nice. Okay. That, that's looking yeah. good. Those are big BCs. It is uh, good. And it's nice to see Croxagore looking like um, they have a place. Yes. Because they are cool as heck models. Mm-hmm. All right. Coherency range. Nice and easy now. Coherency range is now half inch. Models must remain within range of at least one other model, not units. Um, and then if uh, you have seven or more fighters, must be within range of at least two 
comrades. Like I said, let's just get some get some square trays, all right? We'll just put everything up in like a nice ranked fashion to keep them all together. It'll be very easy to play this game, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, I, and I say that jokingly, I like this. <laughs> and it's not rank and flank, yeah. but I like this. This isn't a bad thing. I think this is a good, good change. Um, and I do like they even call out, like, hey, Storm Drake Guard are going to have bigger coherency because we built the models weird. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Some things will have it stretched out because of the models and then that's fine because you're going to do it anyway might as well just give us the rules and let us do it now we have retreating um you can still retreat pick unit combat you can just move uh up to your move characteristics cannot move through combat ranges of enemy units but you can't you can move through combat ranges of enemy units but you can't end in combat range of somebody else and you take d3 mortal damage so Oof. attack of opportunities on you if you're leaving combat yeah that makes sense. It's fine for units. It feels harsh on characters. That's it. Well, you know what? If you're a character and you charged in or you got charged, you know, you got to stick in there, you know, go down with the ship. Yeah. It, like I said, it's, uh, it's thinking from the Daughter's Cane perspective. Uh, right now, my high glide atrixes want to go in there. They have six wounds, though. So it's not terrible, mm-hmm. but I might take one or two in combat, so I might not want to retreat. So it's a very interesting thing. I don't hate it. It's just something to get used to. Yeah. You know, and, and on bigger models that have nine wounds, yeah, you know, 10 cares? wounds, 20 wounds, who cares, right? Yes. You want to get out of there, you better get out of there. You take the D3 and you move on with your day. Yeah. And if, if you're playing me, I'm going to roll that D3, I'm going to get a one. So it's fine. Yep, and you're going to roll a six on your ward save, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and uh, as you're checking out this episode, um, you probably see this article that they mentioned down here. On Friday, we'll be unrolling Arcane Scrolls, brushing off our dogma, and pondering orbs, both thaumaturgical and theological, as we impact how magic, prayers, and manifestations work in the new edition. I'm excited for that, but you all will have to wait till next week for us to talk about that for you there. Mm -hmm. So there you go. AOS News, Random Chats, That's all I got today, Neil. Yeah, I think me too. Yeah. I think uh, we'll meet again next week, hopefully with some more news and some more hobby played. So Yeah, and if we are feeling up to it, maybe we'll do a Tomb Kings review. Okay. Yeah. That means I'll have to actually read about the Tomb Kings. Hmm. Well, we'll, listen, we'll play that by ear if, if, if time allows. Um, right. We'll be doing that sooner rather than later anyway, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see. But um, hopefully... There's not a ton of Age of Sigmar news, but hey. <laughs> mm-hmm. Hopefully it's just about 4th edition. We're not going to hear any more about 3rd edition now, so we'll just talk 4th and move on and get to the main topic. Right. All right. Neil, it's time for us to go to bed. It's late. I think so. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm going to stay up because i got a Taylor Swift album to listen to. But you need to go to bed because <laughs> you're a responsible yeah. adult. Well, ish. ish. So, yeah. All right. Everybody out there. As always, have a great week, stay Stormcast strong, and happy hoppying.